Hi. It seems like we're sitting at a unique point in time where we're making as much progress backwards as we are forward. But when could that be a good thing? I'm Margaret Williamson, and you're watching Mind Shifting Moments, where we believe that the best way to gain confidence in alternative medicines is by asking some big questions. And today's big question is how can ancestral medicines like psychedelics work hand in hand with the future of medicines like stem cell therapy? To help me answer that question, I have Isaiah Orlin, who is the founder of Amuna Wellness Retreats, who really sits at the next level, the next frontier of not only medicine, but also wellness tourism. Welcome, Isaiah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I am so excited. This is our first in-person guest, and I can already feel the energy shifting. And I'm hoping that you'll share some of those stories with us on how you achieved such a peaceful demeanor. We were talking about it before the show. But let's start with a little introduction. Please tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your, your tying to the, the psychedelic industry as a whole and uh, your role with Amuna. Great. Yeah. So um, I've been in the spiritual space the majority of my life, studied numerous dialects and religions through family practice, and then veered south into gaming and alcohol. And a few years back, got back into plant medicine on the cannabis side and getting involved with brands and building brands in the cannabis field, which brought me uh, into ancestral medicine and ayahuasca and starting my own journey in 2016. Um, doing some retreats down in Peru. And then about a year and a half ago through one of my business partners, got a call about, you know, getting, having a first look at regenerative medicine outside the country, medicine can almost stem cell treatments, which unfortunately are not approved for various reasons here in the U.S. Um, went down to Colombia and started our journey on putting this global wellness tourism company together. So cool. Well, you hit on what really is the top of my list. You know, why is stem cell therapy, and that's what we're talking about today, guys, that the root of what Amuna is doing is incorporating the regenerative powers of stem cell therapy. But it maybe you're like me, and I'm not really sure what stem cell therapy is, you know, where are stem cells coming from? Are there different types of stem cells? And why are the ones that you guys are using best suited to these treatments? Of course. So um, <clears throat> mesenchymal stem cells, they are master cells. They are medical signaling cells. So essentially, you're born with these cells. They're in your body throughout life. But over time, these cells essentially deteriorate and they don't replicate as fastly as possible. And why that's problematic is because these are your medical signaling cells and they signal all your other cells to regenerate and repair. They also um, are one of the most primary reasons for anti-inflammatory effects in the body. Um, but once again, you know, let's say when you're born, these cells are replicating at the rate of a bullet train and their efficacy is that of Superman yeah. um, or Superwoman. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> as we get into our 30s and we get injured more easily, that's because these cells are no longer replicating. Right. Now, in the US, um, you can have your own cells pulled and replicated and re-injected into you. And unfortunately, that's like sort of having a tired football team put back on the field. The master cells time zero that have no DNA, no blood, and are really just the master builder cells are found in what we call Wharton's jelly, which is found in the tissue lining of the umbilical cord, which is not FDA approved in the US for various reasons, okay. um, primarily financial. Um, so about 15, 20 years ago, the field of regenerative medicine moved outside of the U.S., primarily to Panama, Colombia, Germany, Grand Cayman. Mm -hmm. And a number of prominent doctors went down there and really started the charge and leading the charge, understanding that the harvest during healthy births of these cells, where it's no different than a blood transfusion, the girls are screened, and just as if they donate blood at the time of birth rather than dispose of the umbilical cord, mm -hmm. they donate it is where the master properties lie and where true healing lies. Okay, okay. So much information right there, right? And I asked a big question, and so I want to unpack it a little bit. Uh, when you talk about, you know, those regenerative and restorative powers and the difference between what we might see in our infants and our toddlers and even in, in ourselves, and I'll use it, I have three children, eight, six, and two years old, and, you know, they might get a, 
a cut, a scrape, and it's literally healed almost overnight sometimes. Correct. Um, that they're just regenerating those skin cells at such a fast rate where I can scrape myself, you know, two months ago and I'm still, you know, dealing with, with the visible marks of it. And so is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. But on a much okay. grander scheme, right? On a much larger scheme, because now you take it down to the fact that these are also the primary things that reduce inflammation. 90% of diseases come from inflammation. So, you know, you can take it from tears in the shoulders to spinal regeneration to total body wellness, where you're essentially putting a new team on the field and they're circulating internally and really driving health and wellness. And it's not just the inflammation. It's not just the medical signaling. It's the energy, the, the turning back of time, essentially, in terms of your energy levels and how you can operate as an individual. Amazing. And, you know, we're not really talking about like whether or not this type of treatments could work. It's been proven. It's being done. It's been done. Right. This is not new medicine. This is not new medicine. Dr. Neil, there's a great book, The Rising Tide of Stem Cells by one of the um, leaders in the field, Dr. Neil Reardon, um, that discusses cases. That book was written, I think, in 2016. So it's a little predated. But even then, the conversations in that book of, you know, 80 percent of people who told they were never going to walk again, walking again. And, you know, or even my own personal experience where I had a tear in my shoulder and I would have needed surgery and three months of rehab instead it took eight minutes the procedure five minutes to numb it three minutes for the shots and two months later the next morning from the anti-inflammatory effects no more pain and within two months full mobility back in my shoulder back to the yoga routines back to full lifting with no rehab so why do you think there there might be so much controversy or misconceptions around stem cell therapy and treatments in the united states Tr traditionally it was based on the thought process of you know, how the cells are procured. And that was because in certain areas of the world, they might use fetuses, aborted fetuses, which is not something we use or anyone else. This is about stem cells coming from the umbilical cord. What it's about now is the same thing everything's about in this right. country, money, right? Yeah. Um, you're talking about things that don't treat the symptoms mm -hmm. that actually cure, which takes a patient out of the financial medical system and more importantly than not, um, these are donations and they're unpatentable. So if you're removing, you know, a profit center from any business and mm -hmm. not replacing it with another profit center, mm -hmm. it's a problem. And that's where we're at with medicine in this country. Right. That makes you know so much sense. And I've got an analogy that's popping into my head and I don't want to minimize the situation, but I think it's a great uh, analogy. So this is almost, right, in some instances, medical waste, right? That would be Correct. disposed of and non-purposed. There, I have a, a friend of mine in Atlanta, or a girl that I know, I'll call her my internet friend, who started a company that repurposed food waste from hotels, conferences, Correct. and then kind of repackages mm -hmm. and provides it in safe ways to underserved Correct. populations, right? Creating this sort of blue ocean economy that didn't exist before, why and and you kind of you nailed it that you're we're not really you can create this new blue ocean economy but we're curing people you're you're regenerating so they don't have a cause to come back correct so you've kind of come up with a unique way to help with that and that's by combining that wellness tourism so maybe someone comes down and now their shoulder is all better correct but there's this ancestral medicine tie-in to what you're doing at Amuna. Uh, so tell us about that. Of course, of course. Well, the partners and I, who are all friends, um, ranging from 20 years to, you know, 10 years um, between the individual friendships, um, our journey has has taken us down both routes, um, ancestral and um, regenerative. Ancestral for the mind and soul and regenerative for the body, right? Uh, right. Um, once again, ancestral, when we talk about things like ayahuasca, 5-MeO-DMT from the Sonoran bullfrog, um, psilocybin, these things get at the causes of our anxiety, the causes of our trauma, and they take a patient out of the aspect of Xanax dependency or you know, other forms of SSRIs that are highly addictive and um, you know, painful for, for people to take on a daily basis, right? right? So it's our personal journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my partners are, are the ones that actually introduced me to the, Iow to the ayahuasca in 2016. Everyone has a different experience with these medicines, Ibogaine as well. 
And we feel that, you know, it's a phrase, it's a phrase we've coined connecting the wheel that through the application of stem cells to issues you might have with your physical being, um, that complements the application of, for those who are ready to sit in ceremony, um, the healing that's done from the plants. Um, not everyone's ready for ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, and we also are very careful in terms of the medicine workers and titas that we bring to the table. Um, there's a lot of dissonance in the field right now in, turning, in terms of making sure that people are sitting with the right um, intentions, sitting with the right individuals, and most importantly, um, following through with the integration. There's no magic bullets, right? right? So you can have the stem cells put in and go back to your lethargic life and not and, and feel good for a year, but mm -hmm. you're not using the stem cells for what they were supposed to be used for, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you can sit in ceremony and it's wonderful to be able to interact with the source and the energy, mm -hmm. but if you don't come back, download that, and then do the real work of integration, well, you know, you're not going to get get out of it what, what needs to be gotten out of it. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it just becomes a fun experience. And that's where I think the big mind shift that really needs to occur for so many people and is still occurring in me is taking that perception of some of these medicines as party drugs or party enhancers and then shifting your mind to understanding what they were truly used for, what they, what they could be used for. I think you hit on something there and I was having this conversation with a friend last night and it comes, comes down with language and mischaracterization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was watching the documentary, Michael Pollan's book, um, how to change your mind is now on Netflix yes. documentary. And a lot of it has to do that. You know, a lot of these things, LSD and psilocybin were in trials. Mm -hmm. um, but one, and even with the government, right. The government was using in MK ultra trials. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they demonized it because it was a healing item. And then they grouped it with highly addictive substances that also cause death. When there are, you can't overdose on psilocybin, you can't overdose on LSD, you can't overdose on ayahuasca. You can have an experience that's very life-changing and altering, mm -hmm. um, but there's no reported, quote unquote, deaths from the ingestion of the substance. And so, right, it's like, you know, getting sucked into the system. And right now, you know, what, what we try to do at Nucleus is we're taking individuals on their unique and individual paths to well-being. Correct. And so in order to do that, you truly have to understand what the different options are that are available to you. And so I love that we've talked about incorporating both of those, that there is no one magic bullet. And what you guys are doing at Amuna, let's let's talk about that. So let's talk about the actual on-site experience. Of course. So, you know, if, if, if I'm watching at home and I'm saying, okay, yes, I definitely have some things that I think stem cells could address because the doctors told me my only option was surgery or a life of consistent pain. But I also know that there's inner trauma that might need some healing. And then I, I reach out to you guys, what happens next? I think, you know, we start with the, the regenerative side. So the ancestral side is, is more, it's packaged onto the retreat side, which will be launching in the next few months. And it's going to start with friends and family and Yahe ceremonies, which is Colombian ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that will be in a form where we're not going to force the stem cells on everyone because there's definitely price differentials in the experiences, right? As far as the stem cells, we do intake forms that go to the doctors. Mm -hmm. But there is about a half dozen treatments that that we we apply. Um, one would be an IV drip, where essentially the stem cells go into your lungs for about two weeks. They then circulate through your body and have no GPS, let's call it, no DNA. They're just master cells going and waking up all of your other cells and looking for areas of deficiency. That's what they're trained to do. That's what they do. And that lasts for about a year before those cells cycle out. And that's an, an inject, um, an IV drip of about 150 million, depending to, or 350 million, okay. depending on body weight size and issues of health. And I'm going to interject. Kind yeah, of, please. It might be a, a silly question. What yeah. is the difference though? You know, you hear people getting IV drips here stateside and people coming to their homes and, and, you know, giving them the IV bags. But what's the difference, right? What are those missing that the stem cells, the actual stem yeah, cells, right? I mean, so, I look, I have, I have, dear friends who have drip companies and they're phenomenal. 
Um, they offer different types of nod bags. They offer hydration bags. They offer vitamin bags. None of those are regenerative, <laughs> um, okay. right? right? These are not available in the U.S. They don't do the same thing. And it's why, you know, for quite some time, athletes were needed to make it known that they were traveling out of the country for these treatments, right? Because it was almost seen as a, you know, quote unquote, you know, exp not illegal, but, but a benefit, right? Okay. Yeah. Like a doping in a way, in a manner, um, which it's not, right? So that's the first thing. Um, the other treatments are more site specific. Okay. So in the US, as I mentioned, we have PRP, which they take your blood, plasma, stem cells, mm -hmm. circulate it and re-inject it, right? Yeah. Similar, except we're using the donated cells, the newborn cells in the met, they're adults, but they're newborn. Mm -hmm. Let's call them the platinum, whereas yours might be pewter at this point in time. Oh, too. <laughs> is what it is, right? Yeah. So for the tear, for example, um, in the joints, any joint issues, essentially you have your blood extracted that morning. Mm -hmm. They pull your plasma and they circulate it with the new cells. Yeah. And then they re-inject it in the afternoon, which takes, you know, all of five to 10 minutes. So that's for the joints. Okay. We also do for the spine, depending on the severity, um, where... For degenerative discs, bulges, things of that sort, mm -hmm. similar process. That is the only procedure that you do need to, to go under twilight and into a clean room. Okay. Uh huh. And then um, we also do for the hair for restorative, yeah. um, but your follicles have to be alive. Okay. This is regenerative medicine. So yeah. if you have bone on bone or anything that's completely done, it's not going to work, right? right and we want to be clear question. about that, right? right? So let's kind of stop because that was the question, right? Like, yeah. maybe who is this not for, right? And so we can we can speak to that. So Someone who has a bone on bone injury and there's mm -hmm. no cartilage left, they have no option but to get surgery at this point. The goal is to get mm -hmm. to the stem cell treatment prior mm -hmm. to that experience. For example, me personally, I had an mm -hmm. MRI on my shoulder. I was in Colombia. The doctor was looking at the MRI and he said, "Yeah, you have two years to get your back fixed with with the stem cells. Otherwise, it's going to be more severe." So, um, which I much prefer a needle over. I'm trying not to ever have surgery ever again in my life. Right. right. Um, and then we do things that are um, cosmetic based, but also healing based. So the hair is cosmetic and the face as well is cosmetic, but healing where um, essentially it takes about 40 minutes. You have a few local needles done here, anesthesia, mm -hmm. which I had this procedure done as well. And then they irrigate your face through your pores with the cells and essentially, immediately, your face lifts up and back. It's a facelift. Within the next right. three months, your face heals the blemishes, right. um, but there's no scarring. I'm happy to, you know, be a, a, a <laughs> testimony. No, you're a wonderful testimony if you've done yeah. it. Um, that sounds that sounds great. So you're yeah. saying, you know, through these procedures, that if something similar was done here in in the United States, you'd have recovery time. You'd probably be going under some sort of anesthesia. Is, so are those differences between yeah, the stem cells? Yeah. Okay. So um, let's use me as the as the example, okay. right? So I had in in a single day, I had my I had my IV drip for the total body wellness. I had my shoulder done for the tear. I had my face done and my hair done. All in, it took an hour and a half. You're talking about almost you know eight to ten hours of surgery, right? Right. And the recovery time was my shoulder was a little swollen the next day from the shots. Okay. My face was a little puffy. Um, the following day, I was hiking on the bioreserves in Colombia. So I'm doing yoga outside. So it's there is no recovery time. So it must just be all in the price differential. Are you comfortable talking about pricing? I mean, how much would someone want to invest if they went down for a similar yeah, you know, I like to suite of services? Amazing. Yeah. So the, the wellness bags where we competitively price and we can't go lower than that because there's obviously a market out there. Yeah. So the bags range from 12,000 to 30, depending on how much you're putting in. Um, the individual localized shots, you know, start around 7,000, right? Okay. Which are, they're multiple shots, right. but let's put that in perspective from an insurance perspective here yeah. in the U S right. I'm an entrepreneur. I carry blue cross blue shield yep. PPO, right? I have a $6,500 deductible, right? Plus I have a copay of $65, which is never just the copay for my right. insurance. Right. So when I did the math for my shoulder, yes. it would have cost me $13,000 in the U S out of pocket. Right. Right. So seven, 13. But we like to do is we don't like to go through our list of pricing. Yeah. We like to really look, we're here to heal as many people as possible. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we really do is we do the intake forms and we look at the suite of services that the client's coming with. Yeah. And then 
we do a package, I don't want to call it a discount, but a package experience, right? And from the accommodations, you know, there's beautiful, we're, we're located in Pareto, which is the fourth largest city of Colombia. It's known for bioreserves, coffee farms, flowers, beautiful towns like La Finlandia, La Florida and Finlandia and Scandinavia and Armenia. It's a beautiful vacation as well, yes. right? So we have the hotels that are beautiful and close to the facility, the medical complex where we do the procedures. Um, the retreats will take place on a coffee farm we partnered with in the hills there, which is 22 rooms. It's beautiful. The gentleman who owns it does not want to sell it to condos. So he's keeping it as a natural reserve pool, open air chapel. And then we have villas as well for our more VIP guests that, you know, come with everything from drivers to translators to cooks to chefs, yeah. um, full experience. Um, we always suggest clients coming down and spending a few days because it's really the way I put it. My first experience there, you know, I was like, well, this looks like sort of like Narnia is like the, the right. Disney Imagineers paint this and like waft fragrance in the air because it was that spectacular. Wow. So it's not just, you know, the goal is not just to have a patient come down and have right. treatments, but is to set someone up and say, okay, here's whether it's just regenerative or whether it's regenerative and ancestral, here's the tools, here's your, you know, new fuel. Mm -hmm. And here's how beautiful life should be. Yeah. Look around you. Right. And let's go back and try to hold this space and go into that experience which is really what you know we're talking about with psychedelics and ethogens is really a reprogramming of the trauma that's specific to our lives the trauma that's specific to our ancestors to our family line to our bloodline it's vast and we carry it yes. you know we carry it yeah. you know personally you know being jewish having holocaust um you know my, most of my family being sent to the ovens and then just you know, the traumas of being immigrants and all this stuff. And we use the word traumas because they are, right? They are. They are. And, but understanding that um, let's not mask them, let's yeah. dive into them. And so that, I've got a couple questions. I want to, I definitely want to talk about that. And I also want to, uh, let's, let's start there. When we, a concern that I have sometimes when exploring psychedelics is that does it, it doesn't, does it make you forget the trauma or your, like what happens in the unpacking process? Because, you know, before I think, right, we're masking it with, you know, topical sort of remedies that just allow us to get through the day, but we're not affecting those root causes. And then when we turn inside with some of these plant medicines, we are able to get down and understand the causes of it. Yeah. Is that how you would describe it? Or, you know, I've, I've used psychedelics as a recreational thing for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the last six years as a medicine, seven years, um, it just allows you to look at it without fear, right? And understand and accept the accepting of it, right? And also more importantly, you know, we talk about religion to me is an owner's manual on life, right? Ultimately, we're talking about spirituality and what does that mean? It's this right. connection to this larger source, this greater energy. And that's really what these medicines allow you to do. It allows you to commune with that greater energy mm -hmm and not be so egotistical and self-centered and say, wait a second, I'm part of a larger energy here. Mm -hmm. Our goal is really to heal and help each other and work through our own soul's corrections. If you have that belief, which is the basis of most religions anyway. Um, unfortunately, religion has been used to control, to separate, to cause dissonance in people. When in, in fact, it was really based, most religions are based on love mm -hmm. and based on that connectivity to the source. So the psychedelics are those training wheels to get you back there. I love that analogy. Yes, I'm right along there with you. Um, and then the second question I had is that some of these experiences have been advised to not go along with friends or family. Is Do you make the same recommendation or would could this be a family trip? For the regenerative sure. medicine, bring your family. Yeah. yeah. Um, the ancestral depends what everyone's working through. You know, mm -hmm. the first time I sat with, um, with mother ayahuasca, I was with my girlfriend fiance at the time. And, you know, um, I talk openly about it at points. I was like, well, maybe that was a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake because I was exactly where I was supposed to be at that given moment in time. Right. Um, you know, the thing about, you know, we're talking specifically now about ayahuasca is mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen once you're in the ceremony in terms of what's going to come up. Right. Can you talk about that experience in a little bit, just a more tangible way? Of course. Is it, is it a smoke? Is it something inhaled? It's a tea. Is it ingested in tea? Okay. Yeah. Ayahuasca is a tea that, um, you know, it's, it's a number of root leaves and roots that are combined to have a tea, you know, ayahuasca, chikunri root. Um, and 
what the active psychedelic ingredient is DMT, um, which is found in other animals and found in us. And essentially DMT is your spirit molecule. When we born and when we die, they say you get a hit of it. There's actually research going on now for stroke victims to see if like, if you hit them with DMT or stroke, it just regenerates everything and they don't, right? So the ayahuasca tea um, is from South America. That's where this, this sort of modality originated, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador. Um, the Peruvian is the most popular ceremony, I would say. That's the Shipibo tribe. Okay. Essentially, it's a tea you drink and you want to sit with the right medicine workers or, and I, I just don't use the word shamans or taitas is a word down there that it's more often used. Um, generally, the ceremony is anywhere from five to 12 hours, but generally five um, in a group with a maloka. You drink the tea. If you're lucky enough, you can cook the tea if you're actually in the indigenous areas and not doing what we call a renegade ceremony here in the U.S., okay. right? An underground ceremony here in the U.S. Um, and 45 minutes, you know, you sit in silence pretty much. Um, you let the medicine kick in. And after 45 minutes, there is um, about 40 akaros um, that are uh, passed down generation to generation from the Shipibo tribe. Okay. Those Akaros are chants. And each chant okay. chants you through different transformations. And they chant to the whole group. Okay. And then they chant to you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Um, and takes you in and out of the experience. And the purge is part of the experience. Everyone's purge is different. Um, purge. Um, a lot of people, it's a, it's, you're throwing it's up, a, okay. right? But it's not the whole ceremony. Yeah. And most people feel it's one of the most magnificent aspects of the ceremony because yeah. you really are purging out negative energy. Mm -hmm. um, but it also has to do with your eating habits, your energy, how you go in. If you did the, the dieta going into the ceremony, meaning following traditional, um, we're talking about Peru, Peruvian dietary standards in the yeah. jungle. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're in and out of the ceremony, you know, in and out of the right. trance for about five, six hours. But, you know, the real work comes the next few weeks and after in the journaling and what you're willing to commit to change. Because, you know, you're connected to that source, but we live here yes, and you have to activate here. Yeah. And that's the hard work. The medicine's going to do whatever it's going to do to you once you're in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you have no control over that. And is it, it's a, it's a mental journey. I mean, are you, do, are you still feel present and, and with it? Everyone's or? different. Yeah. Okay. You're with it. You're present and with it. You can get up and go to the bathroom. There are points where the medicine is very strong and you have, you know, the nausea and the visuals. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, everyone's purge is different. I used to be in the alcohol industry. Um, never was an alcoholic, definitely drank a lot. Um, my purge was via sweat actually in Peru and it was the winter and my skin smelled like uh, bourbon street after Mardi Gras <laughs> and um, for a week. And wow. so I changed my relationship with alcohol, but Amazing. it shows you how much, how many toxins were trapped in my system. Um, and that's with ayahuasca, you know, 5-MeO, mm -hmm. DMT and some other site, you know, psychedelics, ethanogens, whatever you might want to call them, mm -hmm. different experiences. Right. Um, but that's also a DMT derived experience. But then to be able to go to that experience and like you said, this kind of Narnia place. And yes. I mean, it just sounds like the way to go. <laughs> there is nothing, you know, I always tell people, look, not everyone has the means to go out of country, right? Um, but you're a guest to someone else's ritual. Um, you know, like I said, my tribe's Judaism, but, you know, I, I pull from Hinduism, Buddhism. I pull from these ancient other ceremony work, right? Mm -hmm. But you're a guest and there's nothing like returning to the actual source and being in that environment right. and being where that medicine comes from and being with the Taitas who actually are third, fourth, fifth generation have been passed down these Akaros. There's great, great medicine workers here in the U.S. as well, mm -hmm. um, but it's just different to be in the experience with the, with the, the soul of it. So then, so we're down there, we've gone through our stem cell, we've decided to go through the ancestral medicine portion, and and then what? Is it just time to go home, or what's the follow-up care look like? We, you know, we'll be having a number of integration days as well on our retreats where we got into the bioreserves. You know, generally, when you do ayahuasca, there is a talk circle the next day. It's very open. People are experiencing, look, me personally... Once again, I grew up studying spirituality, guided meditation since I'm a little kid, right? Not everyone's had that, right? Mm -hmm. So I went in with a different, you know, modality, right? Mm -hmm. Some people, they've never experienced it. You know, some people are reliving severe, severe traumas in the middle of it, um, but they're able to talk the next day about it, right? 
you know, seeing seeing a young lady who might have been raped by a family member at a young age and her reliving that and having repressed that or someone who was beat, a gentleman who was beat or molested. Like these are the things that come up. So the sharing and the openness of the community you sit with is pretty dynamic. And that helps with the to get the wheels moving on your own processing the next day. And are there trained therapists that sit in there as well? Or is it just the community? It's generally just the community. Um, but you know, generally the maestro the, is there with you, the medicine workers and, um, you know, these people, especially the ones we work with, they've spent just as someone would spend a lot of time and I'm no doctor, I'm, I'm a lawyer and a, and a business person, but the amount of time that they've spent in the jungle with the lineage of this medicine and actually bringing it dwarfs the amount of time that people sit in the classroom. Right. So once again, we deal with a lot of miscategorization. We deal with a lot of um, people's hang ups on what education is, people's hang ups on what medicine is, mm -hmm. people's hang ups on what science is. Like we just went through this whole dilemma of everyone telling me, oh, well, it's the science. Yeah. Who's science? Exactly. Right? Who paid for the science is my question always. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I think we need hospitals. I yeah. think they're there for a reason. But who paid for the science? Right. Well, that's maybe the next question or maybe not the next, but definitely a question we can do on mind shifting moments because there's a lot that needs to be unpacked with that. I mean, I just love our conversation today. I feel like I could go on and on and on, um, but we'll be respectful of everyone's time and hopefully soon have another edition. But today, I think we really showcased and answered and helped shift some minds around how ancestral medicine and the future of medicine like stem cell therapy, hopefully, um, can work together to really heal and regenerate and not just mask uh, people's trauma and ailments and really help you get closer to that personal point of well-being. And so if you're listening and the things that we talked about today resonate with you, Isaiah, what should they do next? They can um, reach out to us on Amuna at Amuna Wellness Retreats on Instagram. You could also reach out to us at um, www.amunawellness.com. And um, we're here to help and heal. And of course, you can always find them on Newly, which is a database that is really working to bring together the investors, the business owners, the patients, the therapists, the researchers, all into one hub to really work to destigmatize the psychedelic industry and help people gain confidence in these alternative treatments. So if you haven't already registered on newly.com, please take a moment, do so. You can claim your free profile and also begin your own mental health record. Um, so thank you for joining us today. I'm Margaret Williamson, and I'll see you back for another mind-shifting moment.